Hi guys, my name is Steve. This channel is G.I. Joburg and happy holidays. It's the festive season and that always makes me a little bit nostalgic. So following hot on the heels of my collection video, I've decided to showcase my favorite non-G.I. Joe vehicles for use with G.I. Joe. This is actually one of our viewers' suggestions and I quite like this suggestion because it gets me talking about toys from my childhood that I integrated with my G.I. Joe toys that aren't necessarily G.I. Joe toys. There are some ground rules, however. We're talking about vehicles only in this video, so no playsets. We also want to steer away from Star Wars vehicles because they might actually dominate otherwise. And the third and final rule, these had to have been toys that I actually played with during my childhood or my early teens. The kind of golden era of my toy playing with time. I mean, there might be better, more competent toys released now that um, my adult sensibilities enjoy more, but these are the toys that have the coolest stories linked to them, and as such, they are very important toys for my history, and have the best stories associated with them. First up though, a little bit of housekeeping, I'd like to encourage everyone watching this to take a look at our GoFundMe campaign. You can find it on GoFundMe.com. You see, we want to get to JoeCon 2018. G.I. Joeberg has never been about making money, but we do think that it is an important step in our enjoyment of our hobby to finally get the opportunity to attend a JoeCon and maybe even meet up with some of our listeners and viewers from across the seas. So JoeCon 2018 is a big push and you guys can help us realize this all-time dream of ours. And now on to the list. These are my top five all-time favorite toys, non-G.I. Joe toys, for use with G.I. Joe. First up, I think it's what Cole call the Demon Helicopter. And it, in many respects, was my stand-in for the Dragonfly. It even has the spinning rotor feature, but it is a very sturdy toy. The Dragonfly had a few issues. One being that the rotor blades were rather thin and tended to sag over time. Not so with the Demon. Unfortunately, it is a product of the late 90s and early noughties, so it does feature spring-loaded missile launchers. The other problem it has, and that the Dragonfly has over it, is that it's got these rather feeble-looking double machine guns on either side. I would have much preferred a more conventional turret in the middle, instead it has a light. But, it has a rotor blade in the tail. I mean. It was always a head-scratcher as to how the Dragonfly's no-tour system works. It doesn't look like there's a jet exhaust on this thing. Whereas this, at least to my childhood mind and my adult mind, this makes perfect sense. And as I said before, it is very sturdy and a very, very, very competent substitute for obviously the venerable G.I. Joe Dragonfly. Number two is something that G.I. Joe needed very badly and still, to my mind, has not been adequately fulfilled. And that is a urban undercover vehicle. And for that, I used to use the Bionic 6 Mules van. Now this beautiful toy has got a wealth of features and it was very, very easily applied to G.I. Joe. Specifically, if you have some urban commandos like Shockwave. This was his ride, and boy did it have some extreme features. For instance, these panels lift up to reveal a fully kitted out communications map center. This was like the nerve center before we had the, uh, the Rhino, for instance, and the Rolling Operations Command Center. This side, uh, unfortunately, yeah, the door broke off, uh, the hinge points broke off pretty early in the game, but it was a sort of a recharge station with uh, some interesting dials and whatnot going on there. Uh, on to the more exciting features, however. If you open up the back, there's a back in there, but there's something more than just a, a cavity. You can pop up this bike through the roof, which would then roll down, down the front, and had some very cool features of its own. It would transform into I suppose a more extreme dirt bike? I don't know. It's, it was a very cool toy, just baffling as to how you'd mount a figure onto it. I used to stick them on with um, blue tack or press stick because the handlebars also broke off early on in the game. Not that fine G.I. Joe C grips could really grasp them anyway. Thank you for that, LJN. But it doesn't stop there. You can open up the front 
and boom you've got this awesome awesome quad bike uh, which also had features this gun uh, was linked to the wheels oh it still works yes it does so as you drove forward the the laser would pom pom in and out the bonnet also lifts up to reveal not an engine but oh a dual laser cannon <laughs> so this thing is all firepower and very little practicality though I suppose your engine is is down there anyway uh, so this was very cool for one or two occupants done up in yellow well, why not? It was the late 80s after all. Uh, and it's seated, obviously, a driver and a passenger. Very cool, very cool. If you weren't rocking the bike, you of course had all that space to play with for personal. Coming in at number three, we have the very, very vast and very impressive Chinook knockoff by Chap May. And this thing is enormous. It makes the list ahead of its competitors, other offerings by Chapmay, such as the Osprey and the AC-130 Shark, I think it's called. Both planes that I do have and do enjoy. This guy makes it for two important reasons. The first is, I got this one first, and it left a big impact. I got it before I even had a Tomahawk, so I used to call this the Tomahawk 2. But in many respects, it is a far more dedicated and far more impressive transport helicopter than the Tomahawk could ever be. The Tomahawk is a sort of a small strike vehicle um, to carry a dedicated number of troops, small number of troops. This thing, you could fit 40, 40 guys, easily. Uh, and that leads into the other reason why this thing makes it ahead of its competitors, and that is it has the vastest cavity. Uh, much bigger than the other large-scale Chapmay offerings. Uh, by way of example, yeah, yeah, that's my entire forearm and fist. Uh, but in case you're wondering how big I am, well, here's a more universal example. You can drive a vamp up into it and still have room for some troops back there, quite comfortably. Uh, the back hatch obviously locks in place, you've got a sliding um, cargo door on the side or personnel door, you can have paratroopers jump off there. Uh, there was a terrific rubberized ladder that would attach to this running board and, I mean in case that wasn't cool enough, you've got a winch that actually works and is in fact load bearing. Come on, hook. There we go. Check that out. Friction power, my friends. <laughs> it will wind all the way up in there, which is terrific. So you could have a bassinet um, for a rescue operation attached to that. Any number of later releases uh, and accessories can interact with this beautifully. So it is a very pliable, very useful and awesome vehicle which I naturally had to paint black because I got this not in its military stylings from Soldier Force, this came from Wild Quest where they decided to do it in a lime green. Thanks a lot for that chap, mate. Coming in at number two, we have my first foray into science fiction all courtesy of Playmobil. I have no idea what they called this thing, but it is a beautiful design. Uh, simple, small, easily grasped by a child, and yet it doesn't cut down on the internals, and it made the perfect vehicle for countdown. Now, the Playmobil action figures are slightly more diminutive than G.I. Joe, uh, but O-ring figures were accommodated quite comfortably inside this cockpit and the canopy doesn't have a hinge so it is sturdy, durable, I mean G.I. Joe oftentimes vehicles are prone to hinge breakage not so with Playmobil, they were smart enough to to just give it a simple clip mechanism they're cool instrument details and the features don't end there you got a hatch over here that can then hold another member of personnel or you could put any number of things, it could be a med bay, it could be equipment storage, but in case you needed more equipment, the back hatch also opens and closes. And it's got this cool uh, 
multi-directional thruster, which has a click, click, click sound. Very cool, very retro. But of course, I used to use it as a blaster of some kind. <laughs> of course, our adult mind realizes that it's actually a vernier, or as I say, a directional thrust. But uh, boring, come on, firepower instead. So this was a very, very, very cool vehicle and launched many a space campaign for Countdown and the other small smatterings of space Joes that I had. Of course, any Joe or Cobra that had a removable helmet wound up being a spaceman anyway, so, you know. I was starved of science fiction figures and vehicles and this was a big step in the right direction. I now have a Defiant. Awesome. But the number one vehicle that makes this list is in fact the most modest and most humble of all and it filled a very important niche. Uh, I spoke about it with the Mules van, but the Mules van also has the rather unfortunate problem because it doesn't have much, much capacity. I mean, two seats and that's about it. And the internals were always hard to get to if you wanted to put figures in there, so it was difficult to play with them. This was all solved quite handsomely, once again, by Playmobil, who gave us this. Ellen and Rob used to call this the school bus. <laughs> but uh, from its modest stylings, you got a whack of play value because, of course, the roof lifted off, the back gate opened, and you had an interior that you could fully use for troops. Uh, they could sit side by side on this row, or it could be a med bay. There were computer stations, two of them, and of course, your figures could fit quite comfortably up front, the roof could close, and you had a very inconspicuous civilian vehicle for your undercover missions and urban infiltration missions. But we went one step further, because in the early days we didn't have a transport helicopter and we so badly needed one, we would just play out the interior of this vehicle as a helicopter. Guys would sit side by side, we'd light it using a torch light with a red or green uh, filter or lens or um, gel, you could call them, uh, in order to simulate the interior of a helicopter. And then we'd drop out the back gate, either paratrooper style or a sort of a, um, you know, an, a combat drop. And this was a terrific environment to play inside and also a great stand in. And in many respects, more fun almost than accurate attack or transport helicopters because you could actually get in there and you used your imagination which was so important so the school bus was an invaluable part of my childhood and I am very indebted to it these are my favorite non GI Joe for use with GI Joe vehicles I hope you enjoyed the list Please check out our JoeFundMe campaign. We would really like to make it to JoeCon 2018. Hopefully see some of you guys there. And if not, we most certainly will be producing a lot of content around it. So you will be able to share our enjoyment and excitement even if you can't make it to the con. I guess with that, there's nothing else to say but Yo Joe! And other assorted toys. <laughs>